It's the Stitches, and today we're gonna talk about thrifting. One of my most frequently asked questions on this channel is, where do you buy your clothes? And the answer 90% of the time is the thrift store. Usually a small local thrift store, sometimes Goodwill, sometimes yard sales, random places. I don't know if there's clothes and I have free time, I'm probably looking at it. And if you are someone who is avoiding or outright boycotting fast fashion, then secondhand clothing is really the best way to do that. And even outside of the context of fast fashion, just increasing the life cycle of clothing and keeping usable textiles out of landfill are always super important things. But especially now that we're all kind of collectively coping with a pandemic, a lot of us have started to more carefully consider that stigma that thrift stores have for being dirty. Admittedly, most of the stigma surrounding thrift stores does come from just classism. But outside of classism, you know, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Thrift stores handle textiles at such a high volume that not every single piece of clothing that makes it out to the selling floor has been washed prior. And that can pose quite a few problems. So today we're gonna discuss some of the possible risks associated with thrift shopping. The real ones, not, not the classist ones. The actual risks of thrift shopping. First of all, a big huge one for right now is um, COVID. If your thrift stores are open right now, and here in the US we are, I guess, going into a second lockdown, nothing has really changed yet, but announcements have been made? I don't know. I don't know what thrift shopping is going to look like in the beginning of 2021 or the end of 2020. Most of it is online right now, but even if thrift stores in your area are open, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should be all rushing out to them right now. And especially having frequent repeat visits prior to COVID, yeah, I went to the thrift stores like once a week and I usually wouldn't buy something, but I would just go and see what was new, see what was there, see if there was anything new that was interesting. But right now, it's not happening. No. It, no. I have been out to the thrift stores a few times since lockdown started, and yeah, there are a lot of cool things in the thrift shop right now because there just aren't as many people there shopping. And I understand how that can create a lot of temptation, but you know, if you're gonna go outside, take precautions and make sure you have a real valid reason for being there. Be aware of what you need and and what you don't need and if you are going to go out obviously you know wash your hands frequently carry some hand sanitizer with you wear a gosh dang mask you know the, the basics the things i shouldn't have to tell you and i mean even outside of all this you should still be sanitizing and washing your hands when you go through thrift stores anyway. But just in general, like, try to have that discipline, try to avoid any unnecessary trips to the thrift store, at least for the time being. Aside from catching something contagious, there are other things that can go wrong at the thrift store. One of the biggest stigmas regarding thrifted clothing is that they can come with surprise stains, smells, perhaps bodily fluids, makeup buildup, allergens, things like that. Drawing from my own personal experience again, I have in fact purchased garments with stains, sometimes knowingly, sometimes unknowingly. <laughs> Some stains can be removed. You would be amazed by how many stains that look like they're permanent at the thrift store come home and just wash right out without much effort. But you shouldn't ever expect that to be the case. I wouldn't count on stains coming out. So if you're going to buy something with stains on it, you need to be sure that you either just don't care or it can be covered up by something else or you can alter the garment to make it less noticeable. When I buy a piece that I know has stains on it, it's either because I'm confident I can remove it or there's something that I can see myself doing with the garment if the stains don't come out. Most recently I did a stain removal on a Baby the Starshine Bright dress on this channel and 
if that stain wouldn't have come out, I had a plan for what I was gonna do with it. I was planning on turning it just into an overdress and then using the leftover fabric from the belt to do something else, probably some sort of trim on the front. So I had a plan, I had a plan B for that garment if that stain didn't come out. I might also buy a stained garment if the stain is on the inside of the garment. For instance, I have a cardigan, a mint cardigan that I bought that like the whole inside of it, I, I genuinely think somebody just spilled an entire cup of ramen onto it and left it to sit for a few weeks because I it is such a huge stain on the inside of that cardigan but it's on the inside of the cardigan it's like on the inside of the sleeve and like in this region so like no one is ever going to see that in fact if I wouldn't have pointed it out nobody would have known about it if you're buying at a physical shop, make sure that you carefully look over every square inch of that garment before you take it home. And if you're buying online, very, very carefully check the photographs, like zoom in, do whatever you need to do to be sure that that garment doesn't have visible stains on it. Because a lot of times a seller will put a stain in a picture, but then won't disclose it in the actual caption and be like, well, it was in that picture right there, but you didn't like think to really scrutinize the picture that much. So when it shows up and there's a stain on the front of it, you're still surprised. And if you are shopping online, if you feel like there just aren't enough photos of the garment for you to be sure, don't be afraid to ask the seller for a couple extra photos. Next, moving from stains into smells. Smells in clothing is usually caused by some sort of bacteria. Outside of bacteria, smells can also be caused by smoke and environmental pollution. Just other environmental factors can cause a garment to smell kind of odd. I live in the Pacific Northwest United States and we have really bad smoke from the wildfires every year. And this year was particularly bad. It was probably one of the worst years we've seen in, I don't know, ever, like a long, long time. And I went out grocery shopping in that because I had to. And and coming home, those clothes definitely had a funk to them from being out in the smoke. Since it is caused by bacteria usually, most smells will come out within a wash or two. Smoke and environmental pollution, pet odors I would say, those are the hardest smells to get out of clothing. But if you do buy, say, a wool blazer that has 20 years of chain smoking cigarette smells in it, um, definitely make sure that you thoroughly wash it, maybe get it dry cleaned if it's one of those types of wools. Make sure that it is fully dry and then put it into a plastic bag and put it in the freezer. Be sure to squeeze all the air out of the plastic bag first and leave it at least overnight, but it can be in there up to a couple weeks, maybe even a month or two for really intense smells. The reason that the freezer removes odors is because it kills off the bacteria that causes them. Bacteria and all of the other different odor causing particulates kind of settle their way into the fiber and you need something that if it, if it can't wash it out, then at least neutralize it. I'm honestly not sure why it works with smoke to put it in the freezer as well as it does with bacteria, but it does. I've had success with it before. I don't know. I'm not a chemist. I just do what my grandma tells me to do and usually it works. If you try the freezer thing and it doesn't work, some smells can also be removed just with a steamer. The heat from the steamer does the same thing. It kills off the bacteria. It neutralizes whatever particular get into the fibers of the clothing. So that will neutralize pretty much most smells. The only smell that I don't really have a good way to get rid of is um, just pet urine. I, that's probably the worst of any other like odor causing anything. It just, it's so hard once the ammonia is in the garment, it's so hard to get it out. I think it primarily just takes a lot of patience and you have to just, you have to really love that garment garment and be willing to baby the smell out of it. But yeah, uh, be aware, some smells are much harder to get rid of than others. This video turned out much longer than I thought it would be. Let's take a quick commercial break. Remember to drink some water.
So in addition to stains and smells and other things that come from just wearing a garment, uh, clothes can have other defects as well, such as rips, tears, busted seams, broken zippers, missing buttons, those types of things. Unfortunately, a lot of thrift stores will just throw a garment away if it has, say, a missing button or a stuck zipper. They just don't have time to really try to find buyers for all of the damaged clothing that goes through. So you're not as likely to find those types of damages unless it's like a really cool unique vintage piece that the store thought people would be willing to buy regardless of the damage. But honestly, most of these damages are pretty easy fixes. Buttons and zippers can be replaced, busted seams can be sewn back up, but when it comes to things like actual holes and tears in the garments, it does need to be kept in mind that any repairs will be visible. And while I love visible mending, I know not everybody loves visible mending. And while I know that I can and am willing to sew buttons back on or fix a zipper, not everyone is. So before taking on a project garment, make sure that A, you know how to fix it, and B, that you love the garment enough that you are willing to fix it so that it's not just sitting around in your house needing to be fixed. You have to make sure that the garment is actually something that excites you enough that it's worth it to fix it. So again, the moral of the story is to just carefully look over everything before you take it home. Look over every single garment as thoroughly as possible to make sure that it doesn't have any damage. And if it does have damage, then it needs to be damage that you are okay with. However, there are some things that you can't discern just by looking at a garment. Since thrift stores are a mishmash of all brands, all eras, and they honestly don't usually do that good of a job of keeping women's and women's and juniors and juniors and men's and men's, so you kind of just have every single size mixed together on the rack all at once. They try to organize it, but just because a tag says something is a medium doesn't mean that it actually is. So when you go to the thrift store, the tag size should be just ignored completely. It doesn't mean anything. What A four in one brand is completely different from the four sitting right next to it of a different brand. And the 24 skirt is not going to fit anything like the 24 skirt sitting next to it on the rack. Since we do have the Rona going around, um, trying on clothes in stores has been effectively canceled. Done. We don't know her for now. So we gotta do the next best thing. We gotta actually measure ourselves with a measuring tape. I am aware that measuring yourself can become just as obsessive of a habit as weighing yourself can become. But unfortunately, without the ability to try clothing on, without the ability to safely try clothing on, it is unfortunately going to be impossible to determine fit without one. Being able to have a measuring tape with you to quickly measure yourself and then compare that measurement to a garment just to see if that thing is gonna fit on your body can be incredibly helpful. And it will prevent you from buying clothes that have a poor fit, which means that you're gonna have less garments that you're just gonna have to re-donate back or try to sell or rehome. There is also the risk of not finding anything in your size. Shopping in a thrift store isn't like a mall where every single garment comes in multiple different sizes. What you see on the rack is what you get. Sometimes all the cool stuff is either three sizes too big or three sizes too small. Usually the second one. Fat phobia in the greater fashion industry unfortunately has an effect of fat phobia being in every other part of the fashion industry too. If the big chain stores aren't making those bigger sizes, then they're not gonna be at the thrift store either. In fact, there's so little at the thrift store usually because people who are wearing those bigger sizes usually can't find them in the mainstream high fashion mall stores, so anything that they find that fits them gets worn to bits and does not make it to the thrift store. While I am very obviously not plus sized and I don't know that struggle particularly, uh, it, it is a struggle that exists and I want to raise awareness to it, obviously. Uh, but drawing from my actual personal experience, I have a rather weird shoe size. And on top of that, I have high arches, so heels fit me way differently than flats do. And that wasn't fun when I was still buying fast fashion. Now, finding shoes that both fit me and are comfortable for long periods of time is not 
great. It wasn't great when I was buying fast fashion and now that I don't have that option, it's a nightmare. But I mean, I did kind of bring that on myself. So if you are someone who is an in-between size or an odd size or a plus size person, then finding clothing that actually fits you at the thrift store is going to be much, much harder all around. But probably the most hazardous risk of thrift stores outside of, you know, the pandemic and maybe the transmission of the flu virus. I guess there are other illnesses that could be transmitted through thrift store clothing. I guess if somebody was very sick and didn't wash their clothes before donating, then that could be a risk as well. But it's usually much less of a risk because most viruses can't live on surfaces that long. But it is something to always keep in mind. But even outside of viruses, there is one other very, very hazardous risk of purchasing things secondhand, and that is the potential for the transmission of parasites. Bed bugs, as well as fleas, carpet beetles, I'm sure that there are others. These parasites leave eggs that can get nestled into really anything, and the vast majority of these eggs are so small that they are completely invisible to our naked eyes. By the time you actually see a mature bug though, you probably already have an infestation. So how do we avoid that? My golden rule of thrifting is this, do not buy anything and unless you can fully and immediately wash it. Wash all fabric items with detergent before they come into your house. I'm super lucky because my washing machine hookups are literally right next to my front door so I can come into my mudroom, throw everything in the washing machine, and then it doesn't even come into the rest of my house. But if you aren't that lucky, just keep everything tied up in the bags and just take it straight to your washing area. And then anything that isn't fabric should have some sort of disinfectant used on it. That's your wood items, metal, ceramic, hard plastic, you know, things that can't be just tossed into the washing machine. Here in the USA, some states have a law where anything that is upholstered or intended for children does have to be washed first. So usually when you buy, say, a plush animal or a teddy bear from the thrift store, it has been laundered, but it's still safe to put it through your own washing machine first. Any stuffed animal that doesn't have a mechanical or electronic part on the inside of it can be machine washed. And if you want to buy, say, a couch from a thrift store, make the arrangements to have that couch taken straight to a fumigator before it gets delivered to your house. And of course, you will have to consider the cost of fumigation before buying a couch in a state that doesn't have that law, or if you're just not sure that the thrift store you're buying from is upholding that law. Unfortunately, some thrift stores do have very shady management and a lot of times they aren't doing the things they're supposed to do. Uh, sometimes thrift stores have great management though and they go above and beyond. So it really is hit or miss. It really depends on where you're shopping. So yeah, there are some risks to consider when buying secondhand clothes and some of those risks are bigger than others. And of course, if you are someone who has a compromised immune system, if you are somebody who just gets sick easier than other people. Maybe it's potentially best if you take these a little bit more serious than the average person would. However, I do want to state that most of these rules, most of the things that I've talked about with you guys here today, still apply to buying new clothing. <laughs> I have known many people, I've met and talked to many people that have worked in various different uh, retail warehouse type jobs, and let me tell you, I have heard some stories. New clothes that you buy at the mall are still handled by other people before you get to them. If you buy something new from the mall, it's possible that somebody else might have tried it on in a dressing room first, and you don't know if that person has bed bugs or not. There is still ample opportunity to pick up other people's ick before you take it home, even if you're only buying new clothing. Not to mention the high risk of mold and mildew in shipping warehouses. I, I think most of us by now have heard the LuLaRoe horror story where leggings got left outside in the rain in just their big pallets and then they were just shipped out like that. Girl, we get stuff delivered all the time and we wouldn't have enough room in the warehouses. There would be stacks of clothes sitting outside for days. Faulty products started becoming more and more common. Sellers were receiving clothes with holes, wet clothes, and even moldy clothes. 
Honestly, it's pretty shocking to know just how often stuff like that happens in the greater garment industry. Wash your clothes. So in conclusion, those are all the main risks associated with purchasing clothes from thrift stores, or at least the ones that I'm aware of. There are of course other minor things that could go wrong, but that again is true of buying anything. I don't share this information with the intention of scaring people or being alarmist. I genuinely just feel like these are things everybody should know when they buy new things. There's the risk that you could be bringing something that you don't want into your house. I don't want to make anybody shy away from thrift shopping as an option, but I do want this information to be widely available so that everyone can be aware of the potential risks of buying things and take the proper precautions, especially right now. It really makes you appreciate what you already have in your closet. So while I don't suggest that we all turn into massive germaphobes, I do suggest that we are aware of these things and go into the world with that awareness and make smarter decisions. Can you tell I've deviated from my script and now I'm not sure how to wrap up this video? That's all for today's video. I hope everyone has a good day and I'll see you all next time. Bye!